We'll come back a lot more on college games. He said that. I didn't say that. Well, politics. We're going to visit with Larry Coker about Miami's narrow escape on Thursday night and look ahead of the game in Tallahassee. And the story of a courageous coach who suddenly finds himself in unfamiliar territory. I've always made sure that everybody else is okay. And now I have to do something for myself. Watching College Game Day, built by the Home Depot. Every football coach should spend time with Dan Allen of Holy Cross. It would give them a new perspective on a blown call or a drop pass and a new appreciation for how much it means to walk the sidelines, to hug a player, to give a pep talk, to even draw up a play on the chalkboard. Dan Allen can no longer do any of those things. It began with a headache a year and a half ago, and today Allen's body is ravaged by a mysterious illness that's not recognized by many doctors who say it's all in the patient's mind. But, as Tom Rinaldi reports, it's what's inside Allen's remarkable heart that keeps him going. <laughs> pity seeing this picture stop Dan Allen doesn't want you to see a football coach who can't walk or drive or dress he wants you to see a football coach as his team does his love for this team this family and this sport and he's just he's just a guy that's well determined and he doesn't let anything beat him I hope they see me as a head coach me as their motivator uh, me as someone that cares about them a great deal. For his first six seasons at Holy Cross, Dan Allen was a tempest of motion on the sideline, as tired as his players by game's end. Last year, before the start of his seventh season, he started feeling dizzy, nauseous, with weakness in his leg. He walked with a limp, and then um, through the rest of the summer, by the time the season came, he needed the aid of a cane. I knew I was dealing with something, wasn't quite sure of what that exactly was. So I think I hid it pretty well while I was getting treatments and things like that. Why did you hide it then? Well, I think just the fear of what people would think. Um, maybe the fear of losing your job because, you know, I have four other mouths to feed. Um, kind of fear of losing my program, so that was a big part. In October last season, Dan Allen realized he could no longer keep his illness private and he could no longer coach his team. Two days after a loss at Yale, he called his players and his coaches together to tell them he was sick and he needed help. It was just complete silence. I remember looking at um, one of our captains who was a roommate of mine and it just tears came down his eyes. I knew if I were to take some time off, then the whole world's going to know something. So that was pretty scary. But I knew it's something I had to do for myself and for my family. So it's probably the first time I ever put myself be before anybody else. Okay. And I get the legs? Allen returned to his team after a month's leave of absence, but his body continued to weaken. This spring, after nearly a year of uncertainty, he was diagnosed with MCS, multiple chemical sensitivity, a condition triggered by exposure to chemicals in the environment. Other people with MCS are affected maybe with the point where they get sick for two or three days. Uh, maybe they can't function because they smell perfume or pesticides. Uh, in my case, uh, I'm more severe because it has affected my neuromuscular system to the point where I can't walk. Hats off, take a knee, guys. 
So, with a body that continually denies it, he coaches from the neck up. Conducting practices from his golf cart, he still holds film sessions with his coaches and, at home games, sits atop a sideline platform at the 50-yard line. The game he controls, but little else. He needs to be helped in a chair, out of a chair, in bed, out of bed, in a car, out of a car, you know. He needs assistance eating um, with everything. It's been very difficult to ask for help. That's probably, that's probably another reason why I've kept it to myself and my family as long as we have. But I knew that my wife needed help. Finish, finish on three, finish on three, one, two, three. Finish. Let's go, go fellas, take go. it out. At the center of so many young, healthy men, Alan tries to keep his fears to himself. It's his courage he shares. When you see Danny and how strong and how positive and how productive he is, you gain strength. You know, that's my feeling every day. You know, I've never turned my back on anything and Certainly I'm not going to turn my back on my team, my staff. You know, I love those guys so much. <laughs> Van Allen is improving slowly. They're using some holistic medicine on him, but insurance doesn't cover a lot of it. Finance is a, a very real concern for Allen. He's had to take out a, a second mortgage. His contract runs through the end of next season. Today, Holy Cross will take on Yale. And here's what's also remarkable. Despite his condition, Dan Allen coaches the basketball team of his teenage son, Taylor. We wish him the best. College game day will continue from Austin right after this. How fast and to what extent I will get back on my feet really remains to be seen. Mike Dowling brings us a profile in courage. Holy Cross head football coach Dan Allen. You're watching News at 5 at 6. Local live coverage you can count on. <laughs> I'm painting a picture of a great story tonight that Mike Dowling has for us. Dan Allen, the... You are worse than the politicians. You don't answer a question. <laughs> You'll love this story of courage, determination, and stick to it -iveness. All right, this is a fantastic story, folks. The Holy Cross football team is having a tough season on the field. But the struggles of the team pale in comparison to the plight of their very popular head coach, Dan Allen, who has been fighting a daily battle to overcome a rare condition. Mike Dowling has our story now from Worcester. For 26 years, Dan Allen has been a football coach and a pretty good football coach. Eight years as a successful assistant at Holy Cross, followed by a winning record as BU's head coach for six years. And this season is Allen's eighth as head coach at the Cross. But this year is unlike any year Allen or any other coach in any sport has ever experienced. When he told us the news, it was kind of a, a bummer. The news was that the numbness that Allen had experienced in his leg last season had spread spread to all of his extremities. We kind of got uh, a taste of what it was going to be like last spring. Uh, he, would, uh, he would coach from uh, the golf cart. Allen was diagnosed with a very rare form of MCS, or multiple chemical sensitivity, relegating him to a wheelchair. How I'm doing it, it's a struggle sometimes. He undergoes colon hydrotherapy on a regular basis to try to clean out the toxins affecting his body. He also sees a chiropractor, a massage therapist, and a physical therapist with the help of his taxi driver, his wife. It wears on her a great deal, but uh, she's a trooper. And with the support he gets from home, he coaches like he has never coached before. I really think I've become a better head coach because now I can sit back and observe everything that goes on out here in the field. So he still lets you have it when you're not mm -hmm. doing your job? Oh yeah, oh yeah, he lets us know. <laughs> uh, they're a little bit lucky though because because of the condition I have, I can't yell as loud as I would like to. Every member of this football team has the utmost respect for Coach Allen. To see him fight every day and come out here, it's just incredible. Mike Dowling, Sports Center 5. 
coil. Boy, what a rare thing, right out of the it blue, is. Huh? A lot of things that affect them, they just can't put their finger on. Sometimes it's hairspray. Um, so it's just uh, stuff in the environment. Stuff in the environment that, um, that that the toxins and they affect them quite differently. But he's not stopping. He's going to stay very busy. He's going to coach his son's travel basketball team in the winter. His daughter has on a travel basketball team. She wants him to coach, and he's already said yes to that. Wow. So uh, he's a fighter, a trooper, and we wish him nothing but the best. He's Boy. a great, terrific guy. I, I don't know him personally, but those mm. who do tell me he's just wonderful. He sure is. They love him.